Hey guys, Albert with Toolmoto here, and today I want to talk about a little bit about what a supercharger is and what it does and how it makes horsepower on your car. So if you if you've always wanted to know what a supercharger is and what it does, uh, but were too afraid to ask, this is the video for you. If you understand this concept, you might as well move along. It's not going to be for you. Okay, this is going to be really simple. Okay, uh, so. A supercharger, no, let's back up. So an engine, your internal combustion engine, uh, often you may have heard an engine described as simply an air pump. All it does really is pump air through the engine, okay? Uh, it does a little more than that, but that's essentially what it does. If we were to crank it and not have any combustion inside, it would move air through the cylinders, out the, in the suck air through the intake and shoot air out the exhaust, okay? And uh, has valves to do that. We'll get into that some other time. But, uh, so this is my 2005 Mustang GT, and for the last couple of weeks, I've been installing a supercharger on it. So, you may have heard an internal, the process of internal combustion as suck, bang, blow. Okay, so first thing it does is it sucks air in, a valve opens, it sucks air in, and then the piston comes back and compresses that air, and then there's a, a spark with a spark plug on an internal combustion engine like this, meaning not a diesel. And, uh, and that forces the piston back down, turns the crankshaft, sends power out to the wheels. The piston comes back up, shoots the exhaust out the exhaust pipe, and uh, then starts that process over again. Draws in a fresh charge of fuel and air, comes up, compresses it, fires, comes back down, comes up. So it takes four strokes for that to happen. So we call this a four-stroke engine. So all of that to tell you this. So when the engine has to draw that air in, it takes energy, it takes power to do that, okay? Um, uh, there's no free power or energy in this world. Everything uh, uh, outside of God's given sunlight and the wind that blows, but uh, and a few other things, I suppose. But, uh, uh, but even that, the sun is expelling energy, heat is energy. So, um, but, uh, uh, so your your engine has to work really really hard to draw that engine that air into the motor and so what a supercharger does is it's simply a fan or a compressor or a blower and it simply forces air into the motor so now the motor is not working hard to draw that that air in and so because of that now you freed up some horsepower in the motor and you can send that horsepower to the rear wheels which is now going to be more horsepower than what you had before because you, you're now getting more back there. So you're going to have an increase in horsepower at the rear wheels. And that's as simple. That's it. That's what a supercharger does. That's why it's called a blower because it simply blows air into the engine. Okay. Now, if we want to take it a step further, let's talk about what a turbocharger does. So the supercharger runs off of the engine, so the crankshaft. So right down there is the uh, harmonic balancer, the crankshaft pulley. And it's got this belt running on. This belt comes up here and it turns this pulley, which turns the rotors inside the supercharger, which forces air into the motor. So this one's run off the engine. So we also have what's called a turbocharger. For the turbocharger, you take, we talked about suck, bang, blow. So that blow, that exhaust blowing out of the engine is going out your exhaust pipes, comes out in the back. If you hold your hand or a piece of paper in front of you, you can see the piece of paper move because the air is moving that piece of paper. Now, if you can imagine that piece of paper was a fan, that exhaust gas exiting would rotate that fan okay now if you can imagine you had that fan being rotated by the exhaust gaskets exhaust gases and you had a shaft or an axle connected to the back of that fan and then on the other end of that shaft or axle was another fan and that fan was now turning also because it's being turned by the exhaust gas now the fan that's turning on this end is being used to blow air into the motor so you're taking this kind of wasted energy, the, the the movement of the exhaust gas out of the exhaust pipe, and you're turning that into an energy that you can use to force air into the engine. And, uh, and so that's how that works. So forced induction, you may have heard this called um, uh, forced induction as opposed to uh, what we call a naturally aspirated engine when the engine does not have a power adder, a supercharger, or a turbocharger. And so that's the basics. That's it. That's as simple as it is. That's all a blower does is it frees up horsepower. So the horsepower that the engine was having to use to draw air in, now that air is being forced in and, it's, and you're able to get that extra horsepower to the rear wheels for an increase in horsepower. And who doesn't want an increase in horsepower? That's good stuff, man. Uh, so if we want to take it just a little step further, if you're still with me, 
let's talk about another aspect of this because you know I dig science and this is really really basic we all pretty much understand that when things heat up they expand we all pretty much understand that right and when things cool down they contract and so literally that that air as it's compressed it heats up so as that air heats up it expands and the air gets less dense it actually gets lighter. It's how a hot air balloon works. You heat up the air in there, that air inside the balloon becomes lighter than the air around it, and it causes the balloon, balloon, hot air balloon to float up. Okay? So that hot air becomes less dense, and so because it's less dense, meaning you just have less air in that given area because it's expanded, you're not getting as much air into the motor as you could if that air were cooler. Okay? So the byproduct of compressing the air and blowing it into the motor is heat. And so what we have is a intercooler. So we have basically a radiator inside the manifold here that cools down that air. So we use cold water to cool down that hot air before it enters the engine. Okay, so cool air is more dense, you'll get more air into the motor. So that's what the intercooler does. Now we also have a heat exchanger, which is like a radiator on the front of the car that we send that water that we use to cool down the air because that water is now the heat is being transferred out of that air and into that water. So we've now got to cool that water back down because we're circulating that water around in a system. And uh, if we just leave it in there, it'll just heat up and heat up and it'll quit working. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that water and we're going to send it through a radiator or a heat exchanger to we're going to use the air moving across the front of the car to now cool that water back down so it can go and cool down some more of that hot air okay so cool stuff so the less the more dense that air is the more it can go so but how big a difference does that really make okay let's talk about nitrous so that you hear about people putting nitrous on their cars what the nitrous does is it makes the air really really cold and because it gets really cold it gets really really dense and so you can get more air into the motor so remember the more air we get into the motor the bigger an explosion the uh, more horsepower we're going to have so that's what nitrous does is it uh, it just cools down that air makes it more dense more horsepower it's good stuff so I told you it was easy so if you always want to know how a supercharger or a turbocharger work or even now what nitrous is and what it does now hopefully you understand if you're standing around having the conversation at a car show or something you'll understand you don't have to pretend all right hey thanks for watching I'm Albert with Toolmoto if you enjoyed my video give me the thumbs up subscribe I'll bring you some more videos Hey, thanks for watching.